Hello! Welcome back to the second episode of Hyrule Dissected. In this series, I'm going to be analyzing Tears of the Kingdom a bit deeper and the mechanics behind it. Today, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at Dondons and how they work. But first, I'd like to clear up a few things I messed up in the previous episode. The commenter Pedro Victor pointed out that the Moblin values were incorrect. For some reason, I messed up the HP values and mistook the Horblin values for the Moblin values. I think this is due to the Horblins being called Moriblins in the game files. You can probably see why I messed it up in that case. This has been addressed in the pinned comment in the last video, but in case you didn't see that, now you know. I also incorrectly pointed out that the Gibdo Nest has the highest amount of HP in the game. It doesn't. The enemy that has the highest health is actually the Seized Construct, with 20,000 health. And if you want to get really technical about it, Master Koga's final boss fight has the most health if you include his Construct's health, 20,000, with his normal health, 2,200. I'll be completely honest, I just wanted an excuse to talk about the Gibdo Nest HP, and I'm terrible at segueing. Hence why I said it had the most HP, when it actually doesn't. Finally, I vastly messed up how the dungeon bosses work. While I had the right mindset on how it worked with bosses scaling off of how many you've defeated, I made a lot of errors. For example, any of the bosses in the depths have a set amount of health, and never scale. And Kul'jira's health never actually scales, so it's always going to be 600. There is way more data to go over than I can fit in this video, but I'd like to give a huge thank you to the Data Collection and Research Discord for helping me with this. They've data mined pretty much everything in the game by this point. I like to uncover information myself, since it's fun and gives me more experience with this stuff, but I'm happy that I have the Discord to fall back on to check my information from now on. So hopefully there will be a lot less misinformation with these videos. Now, without further ado, let us begin. Dondons can be found nearby Lakeside Stable. They're a unique NPC found nowhere else in the game world. Taken care of by Sima, these Dondons chill out all day roaming around, and don't seem to do much at first. Talking to Sima and interacting with the gems on the table nearby will prompt a hint at what you're supposed to do with them. But before we get into how they work, what even are they? From my research, they aren't in any other Zelda game, but it's highly likely that they're a reference to Dodongos. Dodongos are usually depicted as reptilian creatures that live in cavernous regions. But some iterations of them, namely the original Legend of Zelda, are more like a rhino of some sort. And these guys look a whole lot more like they derived from rhinos than lizards. So they very well could be a reference to the original Dodongos from the 1986 Legend of Zelda game. So now that we sort of know what Dondons are, let's get into how they work. Dropping a luminous stone on the ground near a Dondon will prompt the Dondon to walk toward it and eat it up. You can do this up to five times before they get full and can't eat anymore. After 10 minutes have passed after feeding the Dondon, a gym will spawn at the location where you fed the Dondon. Note that this is 10 real-life minutes, so passing time at a campfire will not spawn them early. But how do these drops even... work? At first glance, you would think that if you feed a Dondon, it'll give a gem for each Luminous Stone you feed it, right? Well, not exactly. When you feed a Luminous Stone to a Dondon, it cycles between a bunch of different auras to decide the outcome. For example, feeding a single Luminous Stone to a Dondon has a 30% chance to give Flint, a 25% chance to give Amber, and a 20% chance to give Opal, and so on and so forth with other ores. This applies to every amount of Luminous Stone, all having five different drop lists for the different amounts of Luminous Stones, with each added Luminous Stone making the rarer ores less rare. But Maya, you might be asking, how come sometimes when I feed Dondons they drop multiple gems? Well, each drop list has their own amounts for the different ores as well. For example, feeding a Dondon 1 or 2 Luminous Stones will always result in 2 Amber when it drops, but feeding a Dondon 3 or more will give 3 Amber. By this point, I'll put finalized lists of the drop rates on screen for you. If you'd like to look at them in detail, feel free to pause for each list. All of these values will be linked in a spreadsheet in the description if you'd like to check them out by yourself. Before we conclude, I'd like to share some additional notes on Dondons that some may not know. When you first feed a Dondon, it will either drop a Ruby or a Sapphire. It even does this if you feed a Dondon 5 Luminous Stones, so feeding it only one to begin with is highly recommended. Afterwards, all of the drop tables will return back to normal. When you feed a Dondon, the 10 minute timer will start from the moment the first Luminous Stone is fed to it. Every subsequent stone simply upgrades the drop table. If you ever notice a Dondon turning around and walking away after you drop a Luminous Stone, this is from the Dondon getting too far away from its starting point, which forces the game to make it go back to where it was. This is especially annoying if you're trying to feed a Dondon five stones and it keeps ignoring the fifth one. The bony parts of Dondons glow at night. They start glowing at 8.10pm 
and stop glowing at 4.45 a.m. Feeding several Dondons doesn't do anything special. They all simply drop the gems with their own loot pools. Although this could be a good way to increase your chances with rarer gems, and is a good way to speed up the process. And that's all from me for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new. I've edited the spreadsheet of the previous video to have actually accurate information, and I'll also provide a spreadsheet of all the information that the Data Collection and Research Discord have discovered by this point. There is a lot of useful information in it. Thanks again for watching, and I wish you a good time zone.